Now, I'm about to introduce to you a word that I have never seen or heard used before. It came to me in my meditation upon this disciple as I was writing the original notes. And it's a part of the quotation from Reverend Ike, which I'm about to read. Here it goes. With the mind's inner eye, we visualize. With the mind's inner ear, we hear a lies. And see, the scribes have not figured that out yet. You should see Sister Mary looking at that. She's an English professor, you know. We won't ask for a ruling on that today. Read this statement together with me again. With the mind's inner eye, we visualize. With the mind's inner ear, we hear a lies. Uh-huh. How do you hear a lies? In your own mind, hear people telling you that you are already what you want to be. That you already have what you want to have. To be materialistic about it, if you want a new car, in your mind's eye, bring your friends and all your family before you. And in your mind's ear, make them tell you how happy they are to see you with the new car. You have to learn in your own mind. You see, you don't manipulate things and people outside of your mind. That's a very important distinction. How would the people who would be glad to see you with what you want react if they saw you with it? See them seeing you with it and hear them responding to it gladly, saying, oh, child, I'm so glad to see you with this. Quite often on some of the churches, Rolls Royces and other interesting automobiles, people will leave notes. I looked at a note just early this morning at about 2.30 a.m. as I was studying that somebody had put on one of the cars and the note said, I love your car. So if it's a new car that you want, hear your friends, your family, your loved ones and strangers in the street telling you, oh, that's a beautiful car you have. You're here, Eliza. And to get off the subject but on it at the same time for just a moment, you know, different people will respond to your having good in different ways. Some people will respond negatively. There are a lot of people that will come up to you and tell you how good you look and how glad they are to see you looking good and how glad they are to see you with this and with that and to see you accomplishing your good. There are other people that will just say ugly things. I had a, that doesn't bother me anymore, by the way. I've got the victory. Doesn't bother, doesn't bother me at all anymore. A classic experience, and I laugh about it. I told you once, I'll tell you again, it's good to put on this tape. I and one of my aides were sitting in the back of one of the church's Rolls Royces about a year ago. The chauffeur was driving us, and we pulled up to a light. And beside us pulled up a, an older car that was smoking and huffing and puffing. And... Uh, there was a black gentleman and a black lady in the car. I can tell you, I'm, I'm, I can tell you this. You can't get mad with me because I used to be black, you see. You can't get angry with me. I used to be black before I turned green. Well, anyway, the black lady looked over and saw me sitting in the back seat of the Rolls Royce and she started shaking her head from side to side. And then she said, you are a money-loving man. I don't like you. And she just kept shaking her head and said, I don't like you. You're, you're, you're a money-loving man. I don't like you. And so I smiled and I said back to her, I said, but I like me and I like you too. She said, but I don't like you. I said, well, I like you and I like me too. And I said, and furthermore, I'm not going to be poor so that you can like me better. Now, if I had been riding along in an, in an old broken down car and I was beat down and poor, she would have liked me. But I'll be damned if I'm going to be poor so that folks can like me. A 
Art Linklater had a show once called People Are Funny. You know, if you be something and do something and have something, people will say, look at him. He thinks he's something. If you be nothing, do nothing, and have nothing, they'll look at you and say, look at him, he ain't nothing. (laughs) So while I love people and I love everybody and I sincerely love that lady, and I still give her my good treatments, I like her. So the driver and the aide just couldn't believe they were hearing what they were hearing. And it never bothered me. It amuses me. And I still love her and I still bless her. But I'll be damned if I give a damn about whether she likes my wealth or not. And let me tell you people something. You know, you say you want to be successful. You better be sure you can handle it. A lot of people can't handle the criticism of wealth. Uh Uh-oh. A lot of people can't handle the criticism of being successful. My God, I can, I can, I, sometimes I read things in the newspaper about Reverend Ike. Is, 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 who is this? <laughs> that they're talking about. But you see, you have to know the truth of yourself. But now back to Simon the Canaanite, who is disciplined to hear good news. If there's something you want, bring your friends and your loved ones and those who would be glad for your good fortune before your mind's eye. And hear them in your mind's ear telling you how glad and how happy they are for you. Never mind the criticizers. Hear God. Hear good. Simon the Canaanite does not hear the criticizers. This makes the difference between success and failure. Who you're going to hear. What you're going to hear. Failure always criticizes success. (laughs) Poverty always criticizes riches. Riches can't stand poverty and poverty can't stand riches. For they are contrary one to another. (laughs) I'm not talking about people now. I'm talking about states of consciousness with their corresponding conditions. Simon the Canaanite. The mind's disciplined inner ear says to God the good, I only have ears for you. Say that with me. I only have ears for you. Say with me, I am listening to God the good. good. And only God the good. My inner ear is shut to negatives and open only to God the good. Don't never bring me no bad news. 